And our third speaker this morning is Dr. Business Sir Michael Doe. Uh, Michael Doe served nine years in the Republic of Vietnam Army before he was detained for another 10 years in a communist concentration camp. He was admitted to the United States as a political refugee in 1990. Since then, he's been very active in community services. He served as CEO and president of the Vietnamese American community in the United States from 2014 to 2021. He's authored and published 20 books in Vietnamese and English, tells stories of his own experiences in the Vietnam War, as well as articles on American social and political issues. During his service in the Argonne, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, he was awarded 13 medals, including six gallantry crosses, one with Palm Device. He's earned a BA in political science, a BS in electrical engineering, and a master's degree in engineering management. In July of 2022, Michael was honored and awarded the resolution of recognition by the state of Texas Congress for his outstanding contributions to community services. And Mr. Doe will discuss Vietnam War, misunderstandings from the American perspective. So please join me in welcoming Michael Doe. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Next year, 2025, I may not be here, okay? But next year mark the bitter end of the Vietnam War. But for 50 years, almost 50 years, the South Vietnamese often suffered a lot of misunderstanding from the American public and even from the American veterans, Vietnam veterans. The existence and sacrifice of our soldiers during the war was ignored. We have suffered the offense of, for decades, mostly due to misinformation or misunderstanding. Most Americans, sorry, most Americans think the Vietnam War was between America and Vietnam, <coughs> represented by Ho Chi Minh. But, you know, they almost ignore the role of South Vietnamese Army, the government and the people of South Vietnam. When, but when things went bad, it's not uncommon for people to point the finger to someone to blame of their failures. In Hollywood, or documentary, movies, or books, they always blame the South Vietnamese for the fall of Saigon. For instance, in the Vietnam War by movie by Ken Burns and Zig Novik, the, if they sometimes mention the Vietnamese soldier, always the bad image, always the people coward, cowardly, walk left, run from the battle. And even in the movie uh, Full Metal Jacket, they portrayed a South Vietnamese officer as a pin who carried girl, whore, to American GI. Of course, I admit that you know, any, in any army, there are heroes and cowards, not only in Vietnamese. Okay. But we cannot keep quiet before the unfair and unjust perception that we consider very defamatory toward those who bravely fought nearly 21 years in Vietnam. First of all, we need to confirm the nature of the war. It's not between America and, and Hanoi. It's between South Vietnam under the democratic government and the communist Vietnam from Hanoi. The Viet Cong was only the subordinate created by Hanoi to invade Vietnam. South Vietnam. And the American came to Vietnam as a friend, ally, okay, play the role of, of advisory and assistance. They are not our, not our boss. They are not the main role in the world. We, Arvin, fought Vietnam since 1949 against the communist, since the nation of Vietnam existed. And then we continue to fight the Viet Cong when the Republic of Vietnam was established. An American came, came there only after 1954, 55, 
and they sent troops after in maybe 1965, right? So at the beginning of the war, President Jim disagreed with American about the military strategy to fight against the guerrilla warfare. The Americans want the South Vietnamese army to fight a conventional war. That is, that is not work. That's not work. Okay. President Diem learned how to fight the, the guerrilla warfare by learning from Malaysia, from Indonesia, from the beach, Britain. That's why he created the so-called uh, strategy hamlet, which isolated the Viet Cong from the peasant. The, the Viet Cong, like uh, the fish, have no water to survive. But after the fall of the First Republic, that plan, that project disbanded, dismissed. And the Viet Cong had more time, had more, more, more opportunity to, to in, infiltrate the population. You remember um, the chief of the military, American military system, General John O'Donnell. He challenged President Jim. He said, "Who, he who pay this order? That means you know, Americans want to take care of everything, give order to 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 the Vietnam in the fighting." But President Jim objected that plan. And he sent God the plan, you know, initially the one to send the American combat to Vietnam, but President Jim objected. And that's the reason why President Jim was murdered. He's the patriot. He's the man who devoted his life for our country, for our people. And he was murdered brutally by his friends. From 1955 to 1963, South Vietnam achieved some economic, social, and democratic development. But to the American perspective, it's not enough. They want South Vietnam to be at advantage at some, you know, like a mostly highly developed country. It's not that way, because we just, we just from, 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 from the, <coughs> from the French colonialism after 80 years. And our society is just transformed from, from, uh, from the kingdom of, of Vietnam into the first republic newborn. We cannot, we cannot just create a democracy like in the United States. And that makes American government disappoint. They want to rush Vietnam, but it not work. So that's why, you know, they, they murder our beloved president. And from 1963 to 1965, South Vietnam fell into dangerous chaos and long-lasting political instability that gave the enemy the good opportunity to expand in the countryside and infiltrate and establish their cell in, in the urban area also. So that's why the Americans sent 500,000 troops to Vietnam in 1965. And uh, you remember uh, in April 1965, when responding to Senator Wade Moss, Defense Secretary McManara said to the press, I don't object to it be called McNamara War. I think that it's a very important war, and I am pleased to be identified with it and do whatever I can with it. And then after seven years, with 500,000 troops supported by the mightiest and naval force of the world, the Americans realized that they could not win the persistent bloody war in Vietnam. And there were no lies at the end of the turmoil. President Richard Nixon then implemented the so-called <coughs> Vietnamization to transfer the whole burden onto the South Vietnam oven and in preparing for the total withdrawal. And this and both convinced and threatened our president, Nguyen Van Thieu, to sit at the peace talk with the enemy. 
he then declared the achievement of the peace in honor. Of course, we all know that the United States, after World War II, was the mightiest country in the world. United States can defeat the Viet Cong in a brief war, very easy. But they did. They missed a lot of opportunity to win the war. At a time when our enemy was on brink of collapse, the U.S. suddenly paused and gave them time to heal the world and reinforce. During 21 years of her involvement in Vietnam, the U.S. did not have a consistent policy and a solid military strategy. The policy depends on the public pressure with the promises of the politicians in Washington, D.C. every four years for election, in the election. In addition, the brutal death of American soldiers that time appeared on the television in every American family, every night, every day. That cause terrorized, terrorized the people and urged them to join the movement to call for the, any solution to end the war. From 1972 to 1975, the armed forces had to spread very thin and operate in the territories formerly covered by, by the force, triple more powerful, triple. For instance, my Arvin 5th Infantry that covered three provinces, Bing Zhuang, Bing Long, and Phuoc Long, that were formerly supported by the first American, the big red one. The 5th Infantry, Arvin, the part of US 25th Infantry, and the 11th Armory Cavalry. We should remember that the oven was already inferior to the enemy in terms of weaponry. We were supplied with obsolete weapons left from World War II. Our Garand M1, do you remember that one? Can it compete with AK-47? No way. Until 68, we began to receive M16. Before six days, we got an M1 and Corbin M1. And the Vietnam already had AK-47. Very powerful. And our 155 millimeter howitzer cannot compare with 130 millimeter from supplied by Soviet Union. They ran it twice an hour. <coughs> And like, uh, for instance, M41 tank could not defeat uh, T-54. And when they, they invaded South Vietnam after 72, they sent, you know, hundreds of T-54. And at that, that time, we still have M41. Until after 72, we were, you know, supplied some M48. So, for, you know, in Navy or Air Force, our, our weapons fall. Always, you know, up compared to the enemy. So after 1972, U.S. military resistance was cut down, cut down from millions to hundreds of millions per year. By the end of 1974, almost armed forces did not have enough ammunition to fight. Thousands of aircraft did not have gasoline. At same as 10 or 1,000 other vehicles. When North Vietnam sent forces, score of divisions into South Vietnam and launched attack all over the country, President Nixon did not keep his promise. And the American Congress kept quiet to see South Vietnam falling into the communist. And now, some Americans, I'm sorry, not all of you, but some Americans on social media blame the failure of on our oven. They were very arrogant, infected with racism and superiority complex <clears throat> when they looked down on us as, quote, little bastard, groups. Hard to teach. 
we would like you guys to reserve, to realize that there were soldiers of the oven, 37 Ranger Battalion, fought alongside of Marine in Texas. The Urban Marine and Infantry fought alongside the USMC in Hessen and retaking Ohue old capital. It was the Vietnamese Infantry who raised the flag on the pole of the old citadel in Hue. It was the two second battalion of the third regiment of the Urban First Infantry who put their feet who put their feet onto the hill, 937 hill, that we call Hamburger Hill. Why the soldiers of 101st Airborne, American Airborne, were pinned down due to the heavy attack of the enemy. This quote from the report of Colonel Wilson Hopper, Chief of Command and Control Division of the U.S. Military Resistance Command, Vietnam, 22nd May, 1969. Quote, on May 19, 1969, the Arvind conducted a combat assault on landing zone YC-324976 and began moving to position on the southeast side of Hill 937. In preparation for 4 battalion attack on 20th May 1969, Three battalions from the 3rd Airborne Brigade, 101st Division, progressed to a multi-battalion attack which began at 20, at 10, 30 hours. The advance of the Vietnamese battalion was extremely rapid due to the use of the high speed trail and light enemy resistance. They were the first to reach the top of Hill 937 and assaulted Position vicinity YC 329980. The American battalion were meeting heavy resistance on their axis of attack. The Vietnamese oven went to assist by moving north along Hill 937 and relieving the pressure. However, friendly fire from the American prevented the Vietnamese from moving close. The Vietnamese then moved on to reverse lock of south east of the hill. And quote. This information was later on reconfirmed by the Abram tape, 1968-1972. Quote. So the fact that the fact of the first people to the crash was the the other. End quote. So many other brilliant Vietnamese victory of the oven were never mentioned in any American document or movie. For instance, uh, the great victory of the NB uh, offensive in 1968. We killed more than 50,000 enemy, captured 6,000 more, and we destroy, totally destroy the whole enemy infrastructure in Vietnam, in South Vietnam. The second, the siege of Anlok, where we encounter the enemy was our number six to one. We held the city for two months amid hundreds of waves of enemy attack by infantry of T-54. We received about 80,000 round of various kinds of cannon, rocket, mortar, every between 1,500 and 2,000 per day. Uh, here, you can see in uh, the picture, our oven very calm, very calm, awaiting to be people for the approach <coughs> to kill them. They were very calm, you see? They don't run, they didn't run away from the battle. They stay there. And uh, the, the thing Dr. Wu just presented about the 92nd Urban Ranger Battalion at all nation. I don't want to repeat it. And the thing, one more thing. You remember, you remember <coughs> Lieutenant Colonel Hamilton, who was rescued from, uh, from the DMZ zone? A Navy, a Vietnamese Navy SEAL, Nguyen Van Kiet, Corporal. 
was one of the two things who rescued the Captain Colonel Hamilton. In and in the area infected by enemy, admit the enemy zone, DMZ. But later he got Navy Cross, he awarded with Navy Cross. But in the movie, I remember Bat 21 Rescue, whatever, okay, featured the rescue, there were not a word about him. And even Colonel Hamilton did not mention his failure. The American soldier came to Vietnam for one year on this tour. So maybe four or five years. Thank you very much for your service. <laughs> but only, only 10% see the battle. 90% su support. And so, you know, like the Vietnamese army, we have at um, the oven, at the, the big, 500,000, there are about 50,000, you know, fought on the battlefield. Okay. So, that's why, you know, with the enemy, you know, French troops sent from North Vietnam every month. And South Vietnamese, you know, were overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm almost done. So the South Vietnamese joined the army when they reached the age of 18. They could never expect to leave the army until they get wounded or killed in action. They fought the war, not one year, two years, but many years, many more years, maybe 10 or 20 years. Their family, they endure this, this is friendly situation. The family live in poverty, but remember the courage and endurance must exceed the the limit that normal people could stand. So we do not mean to offend our friend or our allied forces. We just want to tell the truth and want to take back the dignity of our comrades in arms, particularly of 250,000 Arvon soldiers killed in action during the war. So Jesus Christ, when asked about the punishment for a woman who committed adultery, said to the mob, let him, who is without sin among you, be the first to cast the stone at her. So we want to send a strong message to those who have insulted, who defend our oven. I want to say, if you did not have a day in the combat, in the battlefield, please stop. Stop. You do not have right to slander our oven. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, do I have one minute? I'm sorry? Just one minute? One more? One minute? One more minute? Yeah, one more. Please. Okay, one more minute. One more minute. <coughs> I'm going yeah. to I'm gonna start the timer, Michael. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, um, I brought here three, uh, three titles, and I have the put on the table now there. If you, if you are interested, I will be there to sign the book. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do, do you yield the rain ranger of your time? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you.